Hello everyone and welcome to my channel today. In my last video, you might remember I was talking about inflammatory bowel disease, also called IBD, inflammatory bowel disease. In my last video, I spoke about Crohn's disease. Today, I'm going to talk about the second very important of these inflammatory bowel disease called ulcerative colitis. So first thing to know is what is the difference between Crohn's disease and colitis and after that we will talk about what are the similarities between Crohn's disease and colitis. So first difference between Crohn's disease and colitis is, as I spoke in my last video, Crohn's disease can happen anywhere from our mouth all the way to the anus which is the bottom end. Whereas colitis, as the name suggests, colitis which means colon which is our large intestine affects only the colon which is the large bowel and the rectum which is our bottom end of the bowel before it comes out. The ulcers in Crohn's disease are very very deep ulcers so these patients do get lots of complication with abscesses, fistulas that we talked about before which is tunneling between one part of the intestine to the skin or to the vagina or to the bladder or between the two loops or the small intestine or the large intestine that is very common which is a very bad complication to get whereas these complications are far uncommon far more uncommon in colitis because the ulcers are quite shallow they are not very deep so what are the similarities between these two conditions first of all there is a family history in one in five people have a family history of it so colitis patients have a more chance of passing on colitis to their subsequent generations and so is Crohn's there is no known cause for the two conditions at present. Scientists do not know. There's lots of research going on. And most people at the moment, they believe that autoimmune, which is our own immune system, which is the system which defends our body against invasion of bacteria and viruses, somehow starts fighting against our own intestine and starts causing damage to it. So that is the most likely cause. And at present, there is no long-term cure or lifelong cure for either of these conditions. It can be controlled because these conditions are uh, get flare-ups, which means the disease gets worse, uh, the symptoms uh, get much worse, and there are times when disease and remission, which means the symptoms are very, very quiet, very, very calm. But there is no long-term cure at present. So what are the main symptoms of ulcerative colitis? The two main symptoms I've written over there is abdominal pain and bloody diarrhea. Bloody diarrhea means they get loose runny motions which has mucus and blood in it. So these are the main symptoms of ulcerative colitis. Now abdominal pain and diarrhea that we spoke about earlier, it, it all depends how bad the colitis is and how much of the colon is it affecting. If only small part of the colon is affected, the symptoms are not too bad. If the inflammation is very severe and affecting the whole of the colon, then the symptoms get very, very bad. So abdominal pain will get worse, diarrhea will get worse, more blood will come out, more mucus will come out. Patient will start losing weight and they uh, start losing blood, so they become anemic. And also little children can't grow properly, so their growth is retarded. So a two-year-old child will look like a one-year-old child, or 10-year-old child will look like a five-year-old child. Because it affects any age from young to old age. Both men and women are affected. Um, it's more common in younger people in their teenage and in 20s or 30s rather than very elderly or very young, but can affect in any age. So how is it diagnosed? Um, the diagnosis, the tests that are done to diagnose it, like any disease, you start from the very basics, which is the blood test and the stool test because patients are having diarrhea. Doctor has to rule out infection of the bowel, like gastroenteritis or something. So simple blood test, stool test, show patient is anemic. Their um, inflammation in the blood is quite high, like CRP or ESR. The markers of inflammation in the body are quite high. Stool test will show there is no infection and there is a special stool test called fecal calprotectin, which I talked about in... Um, Crohn's disease as well, which show there is inflammation in the bowel that can be quite raised. Now the two main tests which are used to diagnose ulcerative colitis because it's affecting the lower part of your colon is colonoscopy, which is a camera of the bottom end, and biopsies taken at the same time, which are looked under the microscope, will confirm whether this is ulcerative colitis or not. And 
The second test, CT colonoscopy, which is the same test as a colonoscopy, however done with a CT scanner. Uh, in that test, obviously, because there is no camera inside, biopsies cannot be taken. But ulcers and all the other findings of uh, colitis can be seen at CT colonoscopy as well. So in my view, these are the main two tests which are used for diagnosis of uh, ulcerative colitis. So other conditions that might have similar symptoms of ulcerative colitis, they include Crohn's disease, which I've already spoken about in, the, in my previous video, irritable bowel syndrome, which I'm going to talk about in the next couple of videos, celiac disease, again, which is gluten allergy, and that I have spoken about in my uh, previous video as well. Infection in the bowel, like different bacteria, etc., can cause infections, can have similar symptoms of diarrhea, abdominal pain, blood, mucus, and the motions. And condition called diverticulitis, uh, again, uh, a condition I'll speak about in my future video. So what are the complications of colitis? I have written mainly two complications, although many complications can happen. In my view, these are two more serious ones. One is toxic megacolon, in which what happens, the bowel, instead of being this size, like a normal bowel, it becomes very big like this. And that bowel is very thin. It's like almost like tissue paper and can very easily perforate. And when the bowel perforates, obviously the patient can get peritonitis and can die from the disease. So these patients require very aggressive treatment, uh, medical treatment, if that does not work, they can even require emergency operation to remove the colon. And the second is bowel cancer. Uh, bowel cancer risk increases if a um, greater part of the large intestine is involved and if the disease is quite severe and also the disease has been there for a very long time, which is 10 years and over. And if it is like that, then um, many uh, units will keep an eye on the bowel with a repeated colonoscopy, which is a camera of the bottom end, to check the bowel out every few years to make sure there are no cancer changes happening. So in colitis, some other parts of the body can also get inflamed or affected. Uh, one is skin, in which patients can get nodules or even ulcers on the skin of the lower limbs or the legs. Um, joints can get affected, especially joints uh, which are the knees and the ankles and the uh, joints, the spine. They get a very stiff uh, spine as well. Uh, eyes can get affected. Eyes can become very red and inflamed. Condition called uh, uveitis, scleritis or episcleritis. And then the liver can get inflamed and affected called uh, sclerosing cholangitis. So, all these uh, things can happen in patients with colitis. Um, now, not every patient with colitis get these problems, but some of them do. Not all of them get all the uh, parts or other parts of these uh, bodies involved, or maybe have only one affected or the other. So they are, just to keep in mind, can happen. So what is the treatment for colitis? Uh, this I will not go into much depth and detail. The reason is because the treatment that were available 15 years ago uh, there are far more advances now, many more medications are available now than there were many years ago. And I'm sure if you watch this video five years from now, uh, this will be very outdated and many more treatments will be available. So there are medical treatments and surgical treatments. However, remember not every patient requires treatment. If the, if the patient's symptoms are very, very mild and they are well under control, they're going to the toilet once or twice a day with not much blood coming out, not much mucus coming out, they got not much abdominal pain and they have a good quality of life. All we need to do is keep an eye on them, give them no treatment. Uh, medical treatment can be given by tablets. They are mostly anti-inflammatory tablets to start off with, like um, we give 5 amino salicylic acid, which is comes in different name, Penteza, Mesalazine, Azacol, and steroids are given if those treatments are not working very well. Then immunosuppressant treatments are available, which suppress our immunity. And uh, like tablets like um, azathioprine, mercaptopurine, so those are available. Then some anti-inflammatory, which are biological treatments, which suppress or control the inflammatory res response, like infliximab. They are given through injections. Uh, now we are coming to treatments which are far more advanced here. And also uh, these are usually reserved for those people who the main line treatments is not working very well. Now, 
surgery is limited to people who have complications like deformed abscess, abscesses drain, medical treatment is not working, then part of the bowel might need to be removed. Obviously, somebody gets a complication like toxic megacolon, which might require an emergency operation, then surgery becomes available. Somebody, God forbid, develop bowel cancer, then obviously surgery is the line of treatment that is available. So I hope you found this video informative and I hope to see you next time. You take care. Thanks for watching.